Hey everyone, welcome back to Kittatinny Woodcraft. Like a lot of people, I've been working from home for almost the past year now. I finally decided to upgrade my laptop stand. That way I can give myself some more storage, raise it up so I'm not craning my neck all the time. So without further ado, let me show you how I did it. So what they say about assuming hit me hard here, and the only one who actually was made to look like a you-know-what was me in this situation because I didn't check that it was square before I cut the first two pieces and ended up having to do what you're seeing here to re-square up the board and then start it all over again. But once this was done, you can see now the boards are perfectly square, match completely. And these pieces will be the sides for the project going forward. If you're wondering why it looks like I'm only working on one piece at a time, it is because that's all I'm doing. I'm pretty much making this one side and then using it as a template to make the other side. That way they'll match perfectly as you'll see in about a minute. Even though jigsaws are nice and the fact you can make detailed cuts with them, the problem is is the blade can wander as you're cutting and actually cause a weird shape to create, which is what you're seeing here. I had to go back with the flush trim router and actually clean it up so it became a square cut again. And with it being a square cut again, I can then use it as the template for the second piece. Now that the second piece is cut roughly with the jigsaw, I'm going to go ahead and tape these two pieces together using painter's tape and then put them through the router table with a flush trim bit and clean them up. That way they match perfectly for the next step. Unfortunately, I forgot to hit record when I trimmed these pieces, but what I've found is the easiest way when you're inlaying a piece of wood into another is to actually lay the piece down on the wood and then make the measurement from there and then that way you get a nice tight fit and you don't have to worry about guessing. Here's where the router table really starts to shine because with being able to use the guardrail of the table saw, I can make the exact same cuts on multiple pieces of wood and they'll be able to match up perfectly as you'll see in a split second. I didn't go hog wild sanding this piece because it was already very smooth. I mostly just did this to get the blue ink lines off and get into the routed out sections, which you'll see in a little bit. And now with everything sanded, we have to do the obligatory glue up montage. Thank you. 
Now I can start to put some final touches on the stand that the glue is dry, and I'm simply doing a 5 8 inch round over bit along all the outside edges. We're now going to jump over to the drawer build. I wish I would have got these clamps sooner. They are really nice to use. And the other interesting part of this drawer build is the two long parts that you see are actually just two by fours that I remilled into the correct size because I ran out of the original board I was using to build this stand. And like all good projects, I had to fall back onto a plan B, which that's what it ended up being. This is a tip I like to use when I don't want to have to re-sand a project by drawing on it for placement of different parts. And that's just simply putting a piece of painter's tape on the piece of wood and then drawing out all the different parts you need. And in this case, I marked where I was going to drill the screw holes and I ultimately marked where I was going to place the handle. Doing this also saves the face of the drawer from getting glue all over it except for the desired location. With the glue dry, you simply remove the painter's tape. Then all that's left for this build is to stain and put a top coat on it. I use polycrylic for this one. Also, because this was a pine wood and it was very porous, I had to treat the wood with a pre-stain treatment. And as a side note, this project actually ended up having a plan B or a plan C, depending on your point of view, because I was gonna use a vinegar and steel wool stain. However, I ended up using a gray stain that you see here instead. And with that said, I would just like to say thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Go ahead and hit that like button and also subscribe to this channel. That way you never have to remember how to spell Kittatinny again. And I hope to see you on my next video.